Jeremiah, Matthew, and Tyree preached. Good God. Yes. Nice. Amen. So it's going to be outstanding. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to the first preacher of the evening, and we're going to give it over to Ole Oradola and the persecutors. Let's go, Ole. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go. I'm excited to get into the persecution Bible study with the family. And, uh, you know, we've been studying the Bible with Ashton, Carter Hughes, and Jason passed on the study to me. And, uh, you know, he – Jason said he's a pretty high character guy, but I was not too impressed at first. Uh, he came with a Mickey Mouse polo and a backwards hat, bad haircuts, and non-slip shoes. This is all up, bro. But uh, he's fighting for the Lord, and he <laughs> wants to do the persecution Bible study year. So why don't we start off in Let's second go, Ashton. chapter three? So we do know we're staying about with Ashton here. We, we, love, we love Ashton. He's uh, really going after it. I think last week we picked up by him slaying the Bible again that same night. Come on, bro. Uh, he's fired up. Anyways, persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So you just got to love the Bible right here, Ashton. You just got to love it. The Bible is so crystal clear. It's math. It speaks in absolute facts. It says, in fact, Anyone who wants to get, live a godly life, so I'm people who are living a godly life currently, whoever wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. Now, Ashton, what do you think it means to be persecuted? Um, not, not exactly too sure, you know, it's, they didn't even teach me that one yet, but all right, let, let's look at this, this definition here. It says, persecution is hostil hostility or ill treatment, especially because of people's religious beliefs. So it's saying that, bro, you want to be a disciple of Jesus. Absolutely, 100%, you will be persecuted. And that's what we're going to study out very simply here tonight, Ashton. We're going to study out very simply. And there's really four major points here. And I'll pass the study on to some other guys later on that they could go ahead and help you out here. Uh, but the first point we're going to look, look at how Jesus Christ was persecuted. They will look at how the first century church was persecuted. They will look at how, uh, what, what are the reasons why we get persecuted. And then we'll look at what is our reaction to persecution. So quite simply, on, bro. today is going to be all about persecution. And I hope you're fired up. And I believe this Bible study is going to inspire you. So actually, if I ask you right now, who do you think was the first person that persecuted Jesus Christ? Maybe like, atheists or something like that good guess let's go to mark chapter three come on bro come on ole come, come on, on bro. come on bro let's go ole teach this guy something oh. yeah we're gonna try help to Ashton out bro help him i'm getting persecuted at the house <laughs> mark three verse 20 it says in verse 20 of mark chapter three it says, then Jesus entered the house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him for they said, he is out of his mind. Wow, Ashton, look at this scripture right here, bro. What do we find that? Who are the first people that persecuted Jesus? Well, it looks like it's his, it's his mom and his brothers. Yeah, the first people that persecuted Jesus, even though G Mary gave birth to Jesus by immaculate birth, a virgin birth, but yet we see here right now, she's saying that he is out of his mind and her, her, his brothers are right there with her. So I think something you have to understand, Ashton, that if you want to live a godly life, you want to be like Jesus, henceforth a Christian or a disciple of Jesus. If you're going to live like Jesus, you're going to get the same results of Jesus. And it's quite simply when Jesus started his ministry, when he started to basically behave like a disciple of Jesus, the disciple, he got persecuted by his mom and his brothers. And Ashton, I want to inspire you, bro, that you know this is going to happen to you as well because you're going to be like Jesus. Do you see that? Yeah, man. Yeah, they're going to think you're getting brainwashed. And in reality, yeah, bro, we need to get brainwashed by the Bible because this world has destroyed our brains. But that's what they thought about Jesus Christ. So be excited when you get persecuted because you know you're acting like Jesus. Let's see, what was Jesus' reaction to this? 
Let's drop down to verse 31. Same chapter, same book, verse 31. It says, then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my brother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Man, I said, so what do you, what do you, what do you kind of get out of this scripture over here? Man, it looks like Jesus is saying that his real mom and brothers are people who do God's will. And bro, do you remember what God's will is? Yeah, so you're going to make disciples. Bro, look how radical that is. Over here, Jesus is saying that people he knew for 30 years, that he's putting people he just knew for a couple weeks over them and saying that's his real family. Why? Simply because they are doing the will of the Father. So this is a quite simple conviction that you must have as a disciple of Jesus if you want to stay faithful and you want to do great things for God. You absolutely must put your spiritual family above your physical family. And in reality, what Jesus says, he said that this is my real family. So, bro, I know you just met me a couple of weeks ago. I know I gave you a ride to church and something like that. And, you know, we were together. But, man, like, the Bible will call you, bro, to put me above your physical family. And I look at these guys in this Bible study as my brothers they're, they're actually put their needs above my physical brother's needs. Isn't that radical? But that's what Jesus did. And he had a deep conviction about it. When he got persecuted, can you imagine seeing his mom and his brothers outside? He doesn't even have the audacity to go outside and meet them. Instead, he tells a disciple in this room to go and talk to them and say, I am going to do this because this is what God has called me to do. This is the same thing you have to do. And it seems kind of cold, shouldered to his family. But in reality, he's just practicing Luke chapter 14, verse 25 to 27, when it says you have to hate your father, mother, brother, sister, wife, and children, even your own life, and put God's love ab above anyone else's. Come on, Ole. So let's see what happened. What was the results? What were the results of this? Let's fast forward three years later. So you have to understand over here, this is the beginning of his ministry. Let's see three years later, what happens to the same people that said he was crazy. Let's go to Acts chapter one. Let's go, Ole. Come on, Come bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's great. Come on, bro. Acts chapter one. Come on, Ole. In verse 12. Ash needs this, bro. He does. I heard his grandma was persecuting him right now. Acts one, verse 12. She got a folder, a manila folder. Anyways, Acts one, Acts 1 verse 12. It says, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the, the hill called the Mount of Olives a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Bro, did you catch that, bro? Did you catch what it said in that last verse? Here is our disciples being numbered. After Jesus Christ has died, and we see that Jesus' mom and his brothers are numbered with them. How inspiring is that? Bro, you're, you just got to understand this, Ashton. Your family, your friends, the people who are close to you, they are not going to understand your new profound convictions. They're not going to hop on this train like a hype train. They're going to be like, man, you went nuts. You went crazy. But you got to stand your ground no matter what happens. And the promise of God, when you watch your life and doctrine closely and persevere through them, that is the key. You got to persevere through them. You will save both yourself and your hearers. And here, Jesus Christ was a living example of that. Through his death, people got saved and his mom and his brothers became disciples of Jesus. And that's the hope that we all want to see. That's the hope that every single one of us want to be reunited with our families. It's so awesome. There's people in our church that this happened to them. I can think of people like Matthew Rodriguez and Selma Ali. I remember, you know, this girl that she got baptized in CCSF and man, she, her mom was persecuting her. She persecuted the church, but now her mom is a disciple. It's awesome that Selma Ali's mom is on the call right now with us. 
And man, like, dude, it's incredible. Even this guy, Matthew Rodriguez, too. He studied the Bible in San Francisco. Then his mom later on became a disciple and she got baptized. And then even last week, bro, on Sunday, one of my, one of my best friends named Jahil was able to baptize his mom into Christ. Bro, it's so true. If you watch your life in doctrine, you can save your family. And this is what we want to do. But you got to go through those uncomfortable times and those uncomfortable situations. But you got to stand your ground. Now let's look at more a little bit. Jesus, he got persecuted in other ways as well. Not just from his family, but he also got name called and he, people also gossip and slandered about him. Let's go to John chapter 7. Come on, bro. Let's go, bro. John chapter 7. Let's go, Ole. In verse 12. It says in John 7 verse 12, it says, Among the crowds, there were widespread whispering about him. Some said he is a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people, but no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. So it's so crazy what we see here. We see that Jesus Christ people basically gossip about him and they divided the crowd. Some people thought that Jesus Christ was trying to deceive the people. How crazy is that to think about that? But it's the same thing they accuse a disciple of Jesus. Why? Again, you have to remember this. We are living like Jesus. That's what we're called Christians. And therefore, we're going to have the same results as Jesus Christ. So some people may accuse you on campus of trying to be a deceiver. They may accuse you and say, man, like you're trying to deceive people. Then some will say, hey, that's a pretty good man right there. I don't want to follow him. But you have to understand our message is a message of division naturally. That becoming a disciple, you're naturally going to divide the crowd between those who want to follow you and those who do not want to follow you. But don't fright, though. Don't fright. The people that the person that they're actually rejecting is not you. It's Jesus. But you understand that he, too, People made fun of him. Why don't we go to John chapter 10? Let's go, boy. Come on, Ole. John chapter 10. Come on, Ole. Come on, bro. In verse 19. This one's pretty fascinating for myself. When I, when I first was like, wow, like, this is amazing. John chapter 10, verse 19, it says, the Jews who heard these words were again divided. See, again, we see that division there. Many of them said he's a demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? And others said, these are not the things of man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Again, we see Jesus dividing the crowd. I think we have to be okay with that as disciples of Jesus. I mean, sometimes we could be so afraid, like, hey, like we don't want to ruffle, ruffle feathers. We don't want to step on toes. Dude, Jesus Christ was a master toe stepper. He was a man who was not afraid to step on toes. Why? Not just for the sake of stepping on toes, not just for the sake of just making noise, not just for the sake of just making people angry. He did this because of truth. See, the truth divides people. And some people say that this guy was demon possessed. But then people are like, dude, how can a man who's demon possessed breed demons? But again, you cannot shy away from persecution. Because it's going to happen. Even happens on us, with us on this, on this campus. People said that we are crazy. We're trying to see people. There's a whole article about us on, on a newspaper that has one of the guys named Israel. The guy that actually met you, with, he was on the front page of it. And they're saying, man, these guys are just, oh, is he? They're, trying, they're trying to take people away. But no, we're just preaching God's word. And we see religious people, religious people were the ones that primarily persecuted Jesus Christ. It's the same thing for us. Religion. Why do you think religion? Because religious people don't like our message of division. They want an all-inclusive message. But the truth is not all-inclusive. The truth is only for those who want to submit to it. But how bad did it get for Jesus? How bad did it get for Jesus' persecution? Well, I think you know where this is headed. Let's go to Luke chapter 23. Come on, bro. Help us now. Luke 23. In verse one, come on, bro. Come on, bro. It says, then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, we have found this man subverting our nation 
He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, King. So Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. So we understand how the end of this account ends. Jesus Christ gets, gets crucified for half-truths. So it gets so bad for Jesus. His persecution leads him to the cross. This is why it leaves without any excuse, Ashton, to go through any type of persecution we may go through. Yeah, it may get difficult. Yeah, you may get second thoughts, but you just got to go back to the scriptures and make a stand for your own convictions. So this is a convicting question that you have to ask yourself, Ashton. Jesus Christ, he, his persecution got so bad that it led to people lying about him. It led to people convicting him of half-truths and then him dying on a cross for your sins. Now you have to ask yourself, what is following Jesus going to lead you to? And that's the question you have to ask yourself. But not only Jesus that got persecuted. The first century church was also persecuted as well. And for that, I'd like to hand it on over to my good friend, Jeremiah Lindley, to talk about the first century church. Come on away, good friend. Come on. Let's go, Lindley. Let's go. Hey, Lindley. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, bro. Beard, bro. This bro. Yeah, nice beard. Let me get your beard. Hey, man. Well, Oleg, great job there. That's my Thanks co-leader. for transitioning it over here. Uh, you did a great job, bro. Thank you for helping us with that. So uh, now we're going to go into the fact that, uh, you know, Ashton, obviously, as Ole shared, um, you know, Jesus was persecuted for what he was preaching, for the stand that he took. But not only was Jesus persecuted while he was here on earth, the church was persecuted after Jesus left. And we're going to go into that here and look and see how the church was persecuted when Jesus left. We're going to look over at Acts chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. Come on, bro. Bro. Acts chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. Did you get there? Come on, Jeremiah. Okay, awesome, bro. All right. Then the high priest And all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. And so right here, you know, Ashton, you see see the people here prior to this happening. They were flocking to the apostles. The apostles were there in Jerusalem, and the people were flocking from the surrounding towns to lay their sick at the shadow of Peter to be healed. More and more people believed and were added to their number. So here it is, the apostles, they're gaining all of these disciples here, and the church is growing day by day in number here. And huge crowds, Ashton, were gathering around the apostles at this time. And looking at this scripture here, according to this passage, how did the religious leaders respond to the growth that the disciples were enjoying at this time? Well, according to the scripture, it looks like they, uh, they arrested the apostles. That's exactly right. That's exactly what they did. So why would they do that, Ashton? Like, why would they arrest the apostles here for doing the work of the Lord? What does is, what is the scripture here teach us about the reason why they arrested? You can actually read it right there off the page there. Well, it looks, like, it looks like it says they were filled with jealousy. Exactly. Now, why would they be jealous, Ashton? Like, why would they be jealous of, of the apostles here? Well, because they were, it looks like they were having an impact. And isn't that how it goes, Ashton? Isn't that, isn't that usually how this happens? Once you, once you take a stand, once you start making an impact, isn't that when the hate starts? 
isn't that when the hating begins? You know, Ashton, you have an appreciation for hip hop. And uh, that's really what I like, one of the things I like about you, man. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, back in the day, there was this rivalry, actually this West Coast, East Coast rivalry okay, okay. in hip hop music. And, and the major players were also two people who were at the top of the game when it came to hip hop. Hmm. And that was Biggie Smalls on the East Coast, okay. who uh, was with Bad Boy Records. Okay. And that was Tupac Shakur yeah. here on the West Coast, who as Tupac. we know, was with Death Row Records. Okay. And, uh, you know, these guys were at the top of the world. And uh, Biggie Smalls, he was quoted in regards to success as saying that jealousy and envy is something that just comes with the territory. Mm. And here it is. The apostles had all these crowds coming to, to lay their sick, coming to hear what they're saying. And the, the Sadducees, the rulers, they were jealous of the apostles. And that's what the scripture teaches us here. Is that there are religious people out there that are going to persecute you because they're jealous. Because they're jealous of you. Because you're making an impact. How do you feel about that? Like, is that something that you could see happening? Oh yeah, well, you know, I always have people hating on me all the time anyway. Okay, well, well, yeah, you know, it, it, it's because you, you're trying to do something, you know. Come you're on, bro. Sitting around here, you know, twiddling your thumbs. You're trying to, you're, you're a mover and a shaker. And so people are going to hate right. on you. And it's the same way when right. it comes to Christianity. The, on, the, the religious world will always hate the true disciples. Let's look over at another passage here about the reason why they were hating on these guys. Let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 38. Come on, Jeremiah. Good, Come, Jeremiah. On, bro. Come on, bro. All right, Ashton. I'm going to go ahead, Ashton, if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this one right here. Um, it says, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Now, looking at this passage here, Ashton, we see that the apostles, they suffered mistreatment at the hands of the religious leaders. Now, these religious leaders, as we had read earlier, they had the apostles in prison. They had them put in public jail. And then, you know, they have a conversation with this guy named Gamaliel, who basically tells them, look, guys, there are, there are a lot of people who, who view these people to be men of God, and it would be good for you at this time to let these guys go, let them do their thing, and let time tell whether what they are doing is from God or from man, all right? And so what they do is they go, okay, we'll let them go. But, but they didn't just let them go. They tried to control the message. They said, you can go, but don't speak anymore in his name. And they flogged them, Ashton, like they had them beat. Now, that's pretty harsh. You know, luckily here in the, the U.S., we don't necessarily get beat for our faith, you know. But we can definitely be mistreated for our faith. And, and let me ask you this, Ashton, looking at this here, do you think these leaders here had any idea that what they were doing was wrong? Or do you think that they thought that they were totally right in doing this? Well, yeah, it seems like 
seems like they uh, seems like they, it didn't it didn't appear that they thought that they were wrong. That's for sure. Absolutely. You know what's crazy, Ashton, is people can actually persecute you thinking that they're doing what God wants them to do. And and honestly, you're going to be persecuted by people here Come on, bro. in the Bay Area who think they're doing what God has called them to do. And I'm going to say, you really got to have compassion. See that it's really not personal. It's just where they're at. But this is going to happen. Now, what, one thing that's interesting, Ashley, and, and maybe you, you, you notice this here, but how did the disciples respond when they were persecuted? Did they go run off and hide and stop preaching the word of God and go run off into a hole somewhere and, and out of fear that if they preach the word, they're going to be beaten again? No, it, it looks like they... Uh, it looks like they uh, they actually were, were excited. Yeah, they were. They were excited. You know what? Actually, that's interesting. Most people that I study with, they don't pick up on that. It actually says they rejoiced at being beaten for the name of Jesus. And not only that, Ashton, but, but according to this passage, it says they went from house to house, and they never stopped proclaiming. So day after day. In the synagogue, from house to in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped. They couldn't be stopped. They couldn't be intimidated. Man, Christianity, Ashton, it'll make a man out of you. Mm. You know, you you can't be a punk on, or be a Christian. Mm. You know, you've got to be on. a guy who's going to stand the face of of intimidation. You got to be a guy who's going to who's going to stare down the face of persecution and you got to be a guy that'll preach anyway. Because it's coming, man. And and if you're not, you're not going to make it. So with that said, knowing that this persecution is going to come, is this still what you want to do? Oh, I'm used to it, man. People always, you know, they hate on me. That doesn't bother me at all. Okay, okay. You know, I, 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 I you know, I can see that in you, Ashton. I, I, you, you, you come off to me as a guy who, who doesn't back down from a challenge. And, and keep that heart because you're going to get challenged a lot, especially out here with all the tree huggers and all the craziness <laughs> here in Berkeley. You're going to get challenged on your faith a lot here. So, that's right. Well, Ashton, let's let's uh let's look at one more one more passage here in uh, Acts chapter twenty eight, verse uh, twenty one. Come on, bro. In twenty two. Help him out, bro. And, uh, come right. on, Jeremiah. Let's go, bro. Come on, Ashton, you got this, bro. You know, um, Ashton, you're, I'll tell you what, man. You know, we've been we need guys like you. We need guys like you that are, are not going to be scared. Yeah. And, are not going to punk out when people come and persecute them, For um, sure. because guys like you, you're going to make a huge impact. And I, I can already see that in you, brother. Let's look here in verse 21, 22. It says they replied, "We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of the brothers who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are." For we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. Mm. You know, the church, Ashton, was controversial everywhere it spread. And here they are, they're brought in here. And, you know, they're, they're told, hey, look, everybody is talking against you guys. No, we haven't we haven't received anything personally, but we want to hear you because everybody is talking against this sect. And Ashton, what I want you to understand is if you become a disciple, it's great. We have a great brotherhood. We are a brotherhood of churches all over the world that share the same convictions everywhere we go. But you're going to be persecuted everywhere you go. Hmm. Everywhere you go, people are going to talk bad about you. Everywhere you go, people are going to talk bad about the church. And you're going to have to stand up and defend the church. Well, another thing 
that they actually called the church was a sect. Now, the word sect back then, that can really equate to what we would call a cult today. So it's more like today's word for cult. Like, that's how brutal they were. Here it is, you had a group of people that basically were just trying to follow Jesus, trying to call people to Jesus' standard, to give up everything, take up their cross every day, go make disciples, and people called them a cult as a result of that. And you know what? It's no different today. Anytime a group takes a stand for Jesus, it really shakes up and it makes religious people nervous. And they're going to call you all kinds of names. Cult is probably going to be one of them. You know, and, and you just got to be ready for that. I wish I could say that's not going to happen to you because you're a cool guy, you're a handsome guy, you're a sharp dude, but people are going to call you all Whoa. kinds of names. And, Let's and go, you Lindley, just got to be ready for that. Do you still want to be a disciple, Ashton? Well, of course, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to be a disciple. Let's do this thing. I know, I already know. People Come on, gonna, Ashton. They're going to they're gonna hate on me. Amen. Well, well, let me just put this before you, bro. Obviously, we are a part of the international Christian churches. And because we are trying to do what Jesus called the first century church to do, and we're trying to be just like Jesus, and we're trying to be just like the first century church, if, if you have a group of people that are trying to be just like Jesus who was persecuted, and a group of people that are trying to be just like the first century church that was persecuted, what do you think is going to happen to the international Christian churches, which is trying to be like Jesus and it's trying to be like the first century Christian church? Well, if they persecuted them, they're, you know, my guess is, you know, they're probably going to persecute you too. Exactly. Exactly. They're going to they're gonna persecute us. As a matter of fact, we get persecuted all the time, Ashton. And, you know, there, there's stuff out there, and you definitely we want to have you take a look at it so you can know that, hey, this is real. This is serious. People get persecuted. Our church gets persecuted. But let me tell you this. A lot of people get scared about persecution. And what I've always told people is this. Dogs don't bark at parked cars. You know, they're not going to bark. It, it cars that aren't moving. Mm. The reason why we're getting persecuted is because we're movers wow. and shakers, and we're trying to turn this world upside down for Jesus. Come on, and bro. With that being said, this is what's going to happen to you, but I also want to go into the main reason why the early church was persecuted, and to do that, I'm going to pass it over to that young lion who leads the Berkeley campus ministry, Matthew Emil Rodriguez. Yeah! Oh my oh, God. Let's go, oh, Rodriguez. Let's go, oh, Matthew. Come on, man. I mean, uh, Ashton, it's, it's, so go, bro. Uh, it's super awesome to be here with you, Ashton. I mean, I heard you've been studying the Bible and uh, got called in. You know, they needed another cool guy just like you to just jump in with you, you know, and uh, I felt bad. super well, honored uh, just to be here. Um, but no, bro, I think it's uh, I think it's super cool. This is one of my favorite studies, the persecution study. This is the one I got really excited about, really sober uh, too as well. So I, I, I want to, uh, what we're going to talk about, bro, is, is, you know, like, okay, so we looked at the, the, the first century church, the first century disciples and how they got persecuted and how they were called, uh, Jesus was called demon-possessed, the church was called a cult. It's like, okay, what could, what could bring them to actually get persecuted in that manner? And let's look over here at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and uh, we'll look and see why did they, why did they get persecuted in this way? And I think this is super important. It's a scripture we looked at very, very, uh, a lot. And so, you know, I just, uh, just, let's, let's look at it here. First Timothy chapter four and uh, verse 16. It says, watch your life and doctrine closely, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. See, the disciples, they, they got persecuted because of what they were doing and what they actually were holding to, which was the standard of Jesus's ministry, which was making disciples. And so it caused so much persecution. 
And um, this is why they got persecuted. So we're going to talk about two things of why you're going to get persecuted as a disciple. The first thing is your life. Oh, right? so you're going to get persecuted for what you are going to, because I mean, as a disciple, you're going to change radically. I can't tell you how much I've changed, you know, from that 18 year old kid that was at San Francisco State uh, about five years ago, you know, uh -oh. but wow. because you made That's such so a radical jealous. change, because you made that, that, that much of a radical change, on, people bro. are going to look at you and be like, wow, I, I do not like what's going on. Your parents aren't going to like it. We learned that from Jesus and people around you are not going to like it. I mean, everybody's not going to like this. You know, you're not going to be the most liked. Let's look at First Peter chapter 4. Let's look at what the scriptures oh, teach about it. In First Peter 4, in on, verse 3, um, let me know when you get there, Ashley. Oh. All right, cool. Give trouble. him some time, bro. Give him some time. Yeah, exactly some trouble, please. It says in verse 3, um, it says, For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do. Living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join in them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. Asha, what do you get out of this scripture here, though? I just, I mean, it, it looks like, you know, because I'm, I'm going to live like a disciple, and I stopped doing this old stuff that I used to do. People are not going to like it. Bro, exactly. Exactly. It means that, you know, like, uh, bro, the, the thing I like about you, Ashton, is you're very charismatic. You know, you're, you're, uh, you got a big smile. You're a happy guy. You know what I mean? You're, you're the center of attention when you walk into the room, and you're really cool. Um, everybody knows you, bro. Like, you walk on campus, and people are like, man, that dude is cool. Like, I seen him at this. You know, he was hanging out with these guys, and, and it's so awesome. But, you know, that could also be one of your greatest challenges. You're a cool guy. And... What comes with wanting to be a cool guy is you want to be liked. You want to be cool. You know, you want to be accepted. And I, I think because your life's going to change so radically, you're going to come to a realization that people are not going to accept your lifestyle change. They're going to think it's weird. They're going to think that you're like, you, you know, you're, you're like, you're like Jeremiah just said, you're part of some cult or you're, you know, you, you, you wear like hoods and stuff and you walk around with like staffs everywhere. You know, they're just going to, they're not going to like this change. And it says why it says, because you don't do what they do, which is what you used to do. You don't live like that anymore. And, um, bro, this, uh, this is, uh, it's something that you're going to have to accept. How do you feel about this? Yeah, man, like I was telling Jeremiah, you know, like, um, I'm, I'm good, bro. Like, I'm, I'm good. I've been at odds with people all my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm straight, bro. Like, I'm straight. Like, I'm good. I'm ready to do this thing. I want to walk with God. I just, I just, for me, I just don't want you to underestimate the challenge that it'll be. Because sometimes, you know, disciples are not going to be around you for you to have a new group to hang out with. And you're going to catch yourself by yourself. And, you know, there's going to be those people around you wanting to persecute you. Um, but I, I want to, you know, uh, really want to encourage you, bro. If I can do it, and uh, then I believe you can totally do it. And uh, I, I, got, I definitely got to, you know, share with you a couple examples. You know, um, a guy like uh, my, my boy Mo, uh, just an incredible guy, football player at Cal. You know, um, he's, he's an awesome dude, man. And uh, he's a, about to be the starting Let's linebacker go, on the football team. And the guy's amazing. And, uh, you know, he understood this principle Right after he got baptized, this guy, you know what he did? He clung to the disciples. He clung to the disciples. You know, he said, you know, he told me right after he got baptized, he was like, hey, can I come over to the house? He, like, pulled me aside to tell him. He's like, bro, of course you can come over to the house. Like, bro, this, is, this is your house. You know what I mean? This, this is the kitchen, Come on, bro. Mo. And uh, I, I got to lift up these guys, Isaiah and Mo. I mean, these guys have been over the house literally every day because they so are involved in this new life. They understand that I'm no longer going to live like that anymore. And I know people aren't going to accept me. And I'm not afraid of that. I know it's safer to be with the disciples. And so I think this is a, a lifestyle change you're just going to have to accept uh, if you want to live like a disciple. How do you feel about that, bro? Yeah, man. I mean, like, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited, you know, it's, uh, it's a little out of an excitement, but, uh, I'm ready to change, man. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to live like this. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to get, get persecuted in this way. Awesome, man. Um, Come on, let's, Ashton. let's look at, a, uh, let's look at another scripture right here. Uh, drop down to verse 12 in the same chapter. It says, dear friends, 
Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of, of Christ, you are blessed. For this, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory in God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. And bro, this is, a, uh, this is an incredible uh, scripture. And what it teaches is that bro, like when you get persecuted, you, you wanna definitely make sure that it's not because you're being, you know, uh, you know you're, you're being rambunctious and you're being a bit of a derelict and you know, you're, you're going out of your way to argue with people because you're right. And instead of wanting to be righteous, you know, you, you wanna get persecuted for righteousness sake. You want to get per persecuted because you're actually living like a disciple. You know what I'm saying right there, Ashton? Yeah, man. I, Come on, know, bro. At first, I was, I was super excited just to go get in a bunch of debates with everybody. You know, I just wanted to like, because I do know, you know, now I see the disciples and I see what I got to know. I just want to go out there and just like, just cut people up with a sword. You guys said it's a sword. Yeah, bro, I, I, I figured. I'm the same way, bro. I, did, I did, made the same mistakes. But I want to encourage you, man. You want to get, I mean, if you're going to get persecuted, let it be because you were righteous and not because you were just raving mad and going crazy on everybody. Um, so that's the life aspect of, of why we get persecuted though. Um, and this is the life that we live, man. It, it's, an, it's, it's awesome, but it is challenging. And, and I, I, wanna, I wanna encourage you, bro, like living this life is not gonna be a walk in the park. It's not gonna be like baseball. It's not like just a sport you can pick up. It's not like riding a bike. It's something you have to actually want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Come on, bro. Care. I really want to encourage you, man. Continue to go after your quiet times. Continue praying, man. Because it's going to be moments where you're not going to expect it. And it's going to get challenging. And the life aspect is going to really come to see where your conviction's at. So that's the life aspect, bro. Let's, let's, let's talk about the doctrinal aspect. Let's talk about that. You ready for that, Ashton? Yeah, yeah, man. Let's, let's just keep focusing. Let's, keep focusing. let's look over here at Matthew chapter 7. Come on, Matt. Come on, bro. Go ahead and go to Matthew. Come on, bro. Awesome, bro. Go, bro. Matthew chapter 7. Sorry, you're, you're, you've been studying the Bible a little bit and flipping through your Bible. I can tell you're having quiet times because you're really getting really good at flipping through the Bible. Oh, right here. come on. You got there before me. You know, I'm super convicted. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, not like Nick, you know, Nick doesn't, you know, he has a troublesome time getting mm. into the Talk. Bro, bro, you're so much better. Than Talk me. about it. Awesome. Um, Matthew chapter 7, in uh, verse 13, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Okay, awesome. This is an incredible passage of scripture. And then, you know, you know, I might catch you a little off guard, but I'm sure you've heard this. You know, you grew up going to church just like I did. So we've heard the narrow road concept. You know, you got to walk a fine line and things like that. But this is where it's actually going to come to our reality. And um, it says here that there's a, a wide road that leads to destruction. And there's a narrow road. And it says many people are on the wide road. How many people, Ashton, does it say are on the narrow road? Um, it says few, 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 few people are on. Read, read, read that one more time. Read that one more time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It says actually only a few find it. Okay, Ashton, let me ask you a question. If only a few find it, how many people are actually on that narrow road? Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't say, but it had to have been fewer than few. Yep. And this is the, this is the concept. As, as disciples, we believe this scripture. We actually believe this, and this is how we see the world. And as disciples, you know, we have a narrow uh, a set of convictions. You know, we, we actually believe that the Bible is the truth. And so not just one part of it can I accept and not accept the other. And Ashton, it's the same for you. And this is the main reason why, as a disciple, 
we get persecuted is because we actually believe in the narrow road. Yeah. And this is what really sobered me, bro. This is what really sobered me. And it wasn't all just kicks and giggles. It wasn't just about my life now. This actually shocked and really shook up the way I saw the world. Because what the scripture is teaching here is that only a few people are actually going to walk the narrow road. But many people are going to walk the road to destruction, which would mean that many people are going to go to hell. And in the world, actually, do you know how many people are actually in the world? Yeah, it's about 7 billion. Yeah, yeah bro, it's about 7.8 billion people. So we got a wide, it's a lot of people right there. And the Bible says there's a wide road that leads to destruction and a narrow road that leads to life. And so how do we get that narrow road? Well, let's look at Acts chapter 4. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Let's go, man. Come on, now, bro. Come on, man. Let's go. Come on, bro. Help us out. Show action. What's up? Acts chapter 4, in verse 12, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Okay, bro, so what this scripture is teaching is that only those that believe in Jesus will actually be saved. Only those that actually have a faith in God, that actually believe that, will be saved. So, well, let, me, let me ask you a question. What does that mean for the atheists, the polytheists, the Jews, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and, and all these other religions that don't believe in Jesus? Oh, wow. Yeah, bro, like, yeah, they, that means they, they don't go to heaven. Yeah, bro, it means they go to hell. So that wide road just got a little bit more narrow. Look at Acts chapter 2. Come on, bro. Go there, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Two, verse 36. It Let's says, go, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow, bro. So this scripture actually teaches that, hey, only those who repent actually make the conscious decision as adults to become disciples and get baptized as disciples. Those are the only ones that are saved. Okay, bro. So what about those that, you know, practice infant baptism or pray just in your heart to be saved? What does that mean for them? Oh, wow. Dang, that's, that's a lot of my, that's, that was my, that was my lifestyle. Yeah, bro, it was my lifestyle, too. And you know what? This is when I came to grips. It was also my family's lifestyle. And this is when it became really tough. Because the road just got a lot more narrow. This is what we actually believe. This is what we actually hold to. All right. Look at Matthew 28. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Matthew 28 and verse 19, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Wow, bro. So this scripture teaches that only those that are baptized as true disciples are those that are saved. But what if somebody's not made into a disciple before they're baptized? So just for an example, bro, I was, I was baptized at, I was quote unquote baptized at 13. So, yeah, bro, I was baptized too when I was younger. Hey, bro, bro, were you ever made into a disciple? No, this is the first time I've ever even, like, this is the first time with you guys I've ever even thought about the concept of being a disciple. I've, I never actually talked about that. Yeah, bro. And now we see just how narrow the road is. Come on, bro. And bro, as sobering as this is, bro, this act, it did sober me. And it, it, it troubled me because at first I was like, oh my gosh, like there's so many people going, I get that. come on, is that? But then I had to realize like, wait, the Bible's my standard. If this is what the Bible says, then that's what the Bible says. And I've got to make a decision if I'm going to hold to that. Come on, bro. And it, it brought me to a reality that 
man, there's a lot of people right now that are actually going to hell. And I can't be soft on that. I, I, I think this is a point, bro, where you've got to come to grips is, hey, is the Bible really going to be my standard? Am I going to have the courage to not look at this as like, man, all hope is lost and so many people are going to hell. But now look at Matthew 28 as the greatest hope for humanity and actually do something about the narrow road and actually tell as many people as possible. Bro, as cool as you are, as charismatic as you are, as extrovert as you are, imagine, imagine the impact you could have if you got urgent about not just helping yourself, as First Timothy 4 says, but also helping others around you by holding to your life and holding to your doctrine. But if we don't accept the Bible as a fool, we compromise everybody. And so for me, bro, I live by a conviction. I'd much rather assume everybody's lost so I can go and do something about it. I can go and actually make a change. I can go and actually make an impact and take on that responsibility and be urgent about it, just as urgent as I am about my soul, as opposed to assuming everybody's saved and do nothing about where the world's at. Come on, bro. And bro, I think for you, bro, I really want to encourage you, as sobering, as troubling as this is, that we can actually, if we hold to the scriptures, bro, we can actually change the world. We can save so many souls. But you got to make a decision. The Bible is going to be my standard. The Bible is going to be my standard. It's so sobering as this is, bro. It's actually very inspiring for me because I see a guy like you and I see the hope for a nation. That's what I see when I look at you, bro. I look at a guy that's not going to, like, God does not make mistakes. He calls those he wants. And I believe you're sitting right here because you're a man that has deep convictions and you really want to do this. But I want to inspire you. You've got to take courage right now because I can see it on your face. You seem a little troubled right now. You seem a little troubled. And it's okay because we're in this together, bro. We're a brotherhood, we're a, a group of people bent on saving as many as possible. Come on. Come on. Bro, I want to encourage you, man. Like, this is, you know, this is, this is the, uh, the, the convictions. This is why we're persecuted. This is why we're persecuting our life. This is why we're persecuting our doctrine. And, and this is why, you know, looking at it from this perspective that this is the hope, this is why God has brought you here to this moment. This is why we also have the attitude in which we do towards persecution. And for that, I'm going to pass it over to Tyree so he can teach you about that. Come on, Matthew. Ooh. Come on, Come on Tyree. Tyree. Come on, Tyree. Come on, Tyree. Come on, Tyree. Come on, Tyree. Ashton, it's a Bro. pleasure to meet you, man. And, um, you know, I hear a lot of great things about you, and, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an honor to study the Bible with you. And, um, you know, as a lot of the guys have mentioned to you, you know, you see why Jesus was persecuted. You understand why the first uh, century church was persecuted. And, uh, you know, it was really because of their life and doctrine. In a real way, Ashton, uh, you know, talking about persecution is really easy to talk about, and um, it's easy to even study out. But it's another thing of actually going through it. And, um, but what should our response actually be? Let's go over to Matthew chapter 5. What should our response be towards persecution? Let's go, Tyree. In uh, Matthew chapter 5, um, it talks here in verse 10. It says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of the righteousness of theirs in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you because, uh, and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. You know, in a real way, Ashton, uh, we should be fired up when we're persecuted. And it's not because, you know, like we're, we're going to look for it or whatsoever. And it's not because we think we're better than other people. It's literally we understand uh, through the Bible is that we're living in the same shoes like Jesus, you know? And, and this has to be our conviction. This has to be our conviction in a real way because maybe the persecution may not happen now before you get baptized, Ashton, but maybe it may even happen after your baptism. But in a real way, as long as this is going to be your conviction, you're going to stay faithful to the very end and get to heaven one day. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, you know, I'm really excited, you know, to, to live like Jesus and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm fired up about it. Okay, awesome. Uh, let me show you one more scripture, of uh, uh, an example of the life of people who just imitated what Jesus said right here. Let's go over to Acts chapter 5. Just to kind of drill this in, I know I shared this earlier with you, but on, just to kind of solidify this point of what I'm really trying to um, uh, share with you right here, Ashton. Come on, bro. Help him out, bro. Attitude? He needs this. You know, in Acts chapter 5, verse 40, uh, let's see the attitude of the, the, the disciples here who followed Jesus. In verse uh, 40, it says, his speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. 
the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering and disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. We see right here, Ashton, in a real way, is that these guys literally rejoice over being persecuted. This was their attitude because in a real way, they understood the spiritual battle that was at hand. They, they understood like they were following Jesus and they were counted worthy suffering for the same name as Christ. And it's really interesting because a lot of times persecution do not make sense. And verse 40 says it, it, their speech persuaded them. When you think about someone's been persuaded, you think about them being convinced. And, 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 but yet these guys were persuaded not to, to flog them, but, but yet we see them being beaten. And it's just, it's, just, it's just interesting how opposition works when um, you're trying to do what's right, but it's a lot of things that's just opposing you right there. And it just doesn't Let's make go, sense. Bro. You know, uh, I mean, we, we have uh, campuses, we have disciples in different, uh, you know, campuses at San Jose State and SF State and, and Berkeley. And, and literally, literally all these campuses uh, literally has faced persecution one way or another. And it so doesn't true. make sense. We're a club on campus. You would think we would be able to get a room, but, but sadly we can't. But we're a club. And it just doesn't make sense. Why? Because there's opposition. But these guys understood the spiritual battle because their eyes were focused on Jesus. And they understand that the, the, the spiritual battle at hand. But what was these guys' response? We know that they rejoiced, but it also says day after day, they never stopped preaching the word. You know, and, and it's interesting because the moment when we compromise, Ashton, and the moment we stop sharing God's word is the moment when God's movement failed. And it's the moment when a lot of people don't actually get reached. But our response and our attitude is like, man, we rejoice to the fact that we get to pers be persecuted just like Jesus. And because of that, we share our faith. And because of that, we share and continue to be persistent day in and day out, every single day, preaching the words of God. You know, Ashton, what do you think about that? You know, I like that. You know, um, I get to be about my ultimate purpose and um, day after day, and just continue to preach the gospel message. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, is, is that something you want to do? Like, what, what do you want to do, Ashton? Man, I, I want to be a disciple. I want to be a disciple. I, I want to live this life. Okay. Awesome. Well, we got to understand, okay, where does all this persecution come from? Like, it, it's the opposition comes from somebody. Well, let's close on out with this. Uh, one more scripture I want to share with you, Ashton, is in Ephesians chapter 6. Up come on, bro. bro. Come on, bro. Let's go, Tyree. Oh. Come on, Ashton. Go, Tyree. This is very important, Ashton. And I, I think uh, as a, I studied the Bible with a lot of people, they got to have a strong conviction in this area. True. Um, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, we're, gonna, we're not going to read the whole thing, but just a, a very small um, uh, passage of scripture I want to share with you. In verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, what do you get out of this passage, um, uh, Ashton? Uh, wh where does uh, this opposition, where does this persecution come from? Well, you know, in uh, verse 11, it says, um, it comes from the devil. Yeah, you're right. It comes from Satan himself. And it makes logical sense because we're, we're trying to take a stand for God here, Ashton. In a very real way, a lot of men, sadly, are not willing to take this same exact stand. It's, it's the reason why you see a lot of churches, even in today's time, where it's just a lot of women with babies. And it's a sad sight to see, but how cool it is that you're a man been willing to take your time out of your, your busy schedule and meet up with us after 9 p.m. tonight and, uh, and study the Bible. That is so awesome, Ashton. But we need a lot of men who are willing to take that same stand. And the way we take that stand, uh, Ashton, is, well, we got to put on the armor of God. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and a lot of us, we try to fight this battle and just muscle and strength and grit, but that's just not the way how we're going to get this job done. We're going to get this job done by putting on the full armor of God, which clothing ourselves in, in, in the armor of God, which is his word, and, and, and having deep convictions. That's the way how the spiritual battle is won, Ashton. You know, what do you think about that? Man, it, it makes me, uh, you know, um, you know want to go back over my notes to make sure I understand what I'm reading and making sure I'm having my quiet times and, and, and making sure I'm close to God here. Man, you're right. That, you're totally right, you know? And... Um, we got to understand in a real way as well, Ashton, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't share these scriptures to tell you people to, you know, turn away from their families. I don't, uh, it's not, it's not about a specific church and your church, my churches. 
it's not about churches. It's, it's not about who's right. It's about what's right, Ashton. And, this, and what's right is literally taking a stand for God in the truth of the Bible. Let's you go, know, bro. You know, Ashton, what do you really want to do? You know, I, I want to become a disciple. I'm, I'm willing to take a stand for God's word and, uh, and really hold down my convictions because I want to get to heaven one day and stay faithful to God. Bro, that's awesome. That's the awesome heart, Ashton. You know, again, I'm just so proud of you, man. Uh, you know, you want to be a disciple. You understand what the kingdom is. You, you, you're here at midweek, and it's just so awesome to see you grow. Um, but let's close on out, and let's conclude with um, why all of this happens. You know, what's the whole purpose of the persecution study? And with that, I'm going to pass it over to my brother, Sir Kwaku, to close us out. Hello. I'm Kwaku. Let's close out in a final scripture here in John 16. Hello. Come on, Quake. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Morpheus. John 16. the sun. Verse 1. It says, All this I've told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They do such things because they do not know the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you'll remember that I warned you. And Ashton, that is the whole point of this scripture. It's why we like exhaustively go over the concept is so that you will remember these words and remember these scriptures and build these convictions so that when they happen, you draw back on this time. And uh, I think it's a huge point and it's something that every disciple has got to have deep convictions about, and that is persecution. And that's the persecution study. Amen. Amen. Guys, let's give it up for... Yeah. All the incredible prophets tonight. Oh, all right. Amen. Jesus, his persecution. Let's give it up for Jeremiah who showed us the, the yeah. scope of persecution in the church. Let's yes. give it up for Matt. Amen. Give us the reason why we are persecuted, our life and our doctrine. And let's give it up for Tyree who showed us what our, our response to persecution should be like. Come on. That's and awesome. I, I'm just going to go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, a right. couple things real quick, and we'll close out with a prayer. But um, I think we really got to make sure that we, we, we build an argument against the fallacy of our religious times that if, if you're following Jesus, that everybody should like you. And I, I find that that's a good way of saying that because people intrinsically believe that today. We, we've, you know, we have the Christmas Jesus and we got the baby Jesus and we got the every type of Jesus. And so people think that if you're following this good man of peace, Jesus, that everybody's gonna like you and quite the opposite from the scriptures. Also, I think the concept of a Yelp generation, we're a consumer generation. We believe in good customer service. And that Yelp mindset goes, well, if people are talking bad about you, then it must be something bad. I mean, shouldn't a church of true Christians get a five-star Yelp rating? Absolutely not. Quite opposite from the church in the Bible. And so I think that that, that building argument against that fallacy is super huge, which our brothers, I think, did an incredible job of doing tonight. Um, I think that it was really good uh, to have examples of people who, you know, experience that their parents being the first ones to persecute them. I think that this is a good study to go, you know, especially a brother who, you know, is persecuted really hard off the bat or a sister, who you know, is persecuted really hard off the bat going, you know, hey, uh, Isaac, you know, what was it like when you first became a disciple with your family and letting that person tell that story? I think that that it builds an argument and shows like a normalcy of going through this for people who are true Christians. And so I think that that's a, a good tack to take there as well. I think also examples of people who were, per I was a persecutor and I became a disciple. Those are powerful testimonies. The, the testimony of a, you know, a Christoph, the testimony of a Matt, testimony of other people who really lived out that great promise that you keep your life in doctrine and strain. We see Jesus do that and he saved his family there 
in Acts 1. So I think that those are very important that you draw those examples into the study. Um, I do think you need to move through this material pretty quickly because it can become very repetitive. And it's not a super encouraging study by nature. And you can only tell somebody so many times that they're going to be persecuted. So I do think that you got to move through this material fast um, and let the material speak for itself more than even other studies. Uh, this is a study for me as somebody who's, for the most part, jumping into the pivotal points of studies that I farm out. I let somebody do this one because for me, the you only can mess it up so much, but I do think an area where you can mess it up is if you're too heavy on it and you're too repetitive and you say too many times that you're going to be persecuted and you just beat that like a dead, beat it like a dead horse there. I just think you got to be careful in doing that. Um, I do believe that the main area where people shy away and kind of cower back in this one is the narrow road. That's one that you want to make sure that hits. And I like even doing so eight. So it says it's a narrow road. Well, there's almost 8 billion people on this planet. Let's find out how narrow that road actually is. And walking through that and going, wow, so you see that's a very narrow road. I think you also got to po point out to particular religious groups. Okay, so there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus, one, only one name that could save you, right? Okay, so what about the, all the atheists? Where are they going? Let them say it and, and go, okay, well, they're, they're going to go to hell. Okay, well, they're going to hell. What about all the, the Muslims? Okay, what about all those practicing Confucianism? Okay, what about uh, all the Hindus? Okay, wow, so you just, you know, you said it. I didn't really say it. You just said it. But you just told most of the world that they're going to hell. A lot of people won't like you for that because that is not politically correct. Okay, so let's talk about even in the world of Christendom. What about within the world? That's where a lot of Christians want to draw a line. Like, let, let's talk about those outside of, yes, I don't like saying it, but yes, they're going to hell. Let's talk about inside Christendom. Let's turn over to Acts 2 and walk through that. What about the non-denominational people who say the word disciple, but pretty much just tell you, call you to pray Jesus in your heart? What about them? Wow, so it's a very narrow road. And I, I think you got to walk through that and even hit the non-denominational people uh, because it's, it's very eye-opening. And that's the moment in this study, I think that is one of the most important moments that people tend to soften or pad in and you do yourself and the person you're studying with a disservice if you do that. I, I, I'd say one last thing. I think you got to have some good comic relief in this. And I do think in your studies, period, I think this is something I love to do. I love to mess with Nick or Matt or one of the guys. And I think when they see that you are kind of have a camaraderie and a fellowship in this type of way, they go, well, this is normal to them. And they, they live in this and they're enjoying it and it brings some comic relief to a pretty heavy topic is persecution. I think it's the same with the sisters and I don't know exactly that dynamic, but I think you got to find that dynamic, whatever group you're trying to reach out to of how to bring a sense of lightheartedness and fun and, um, and comedy, even to a tough study like this, and balance it. Because if it's all like you're gonna get persecuted, you're gonna persecuted, persecuted all the way to the narrow road, it's like, oh, you gotta try and balance that out a little bit. But uh, other, I, I think our, our brothers did an outstanding job tonight. Again, let's give it up for them one last time. And let's close out a word of prayer. Let's pray to our God.